Hello guys and gals and welcome. So it's been seven days. We are finally at one week on the ladder and I have to wear my sunglasses because my assassin's attacks are just so freaking bright. So today is going to be a little bit of a recap on my assassin character. I'd like to give you um, a overview of what my character has been able to achieve in this seven days. And uh, you know that way you guys can, I don't know, maybe compare it to yourself or uh, just you know, have some fun understanding what it's like to, to join a group and actually participate in uh, Diablo 2. Now, of course, um, no items were purchased from anywhere, um, not, at least not by me anyway, and um, it's actually banned within the kinship to uh, go on JSP and uh, different websites like that. So this is a legitimate run from level 1 with a group of other people trying our best to uh, level up as quickly as we can with <laughs> getting our equipment done. Now, um, I'm going to overview my skills first, uh, just simply because I want to show you how I've set this MA set up, and I'll go over why I chose specific skills. And my character kind of evolved a little bit as I went forward, too. So, uh, first off is um, the trap tree. I have nothing in the trap tree. I had originally actually decided to grab Death Century, and um, overall, I kind of decided that it was a waste. Uh, yes, Corpse Explosion is nice, and yes, having that ability to cast the Death Centuries was... Uh, fun, but I felt overall that it actually slowed me down on the whole, which was quite sad. <clears throat> in the Shadow Discipline tree, I only put one point in Claw Mastery. I didn't feel like I needed to put any more than that. Um, I put one point in Burst of Speed because I'm not actually using it. Um, for the majority of the early part of the game, my resistances have been absolutely terrible, and uh, honestly, I couldn't even think about turning on Burst of Speed unless I was just, like, shopping, uh, you know, at the at, like Anya or something for gloves. Um, I have dumped a couple points into Weapon Block because this character has unfortunately proved to be quite squishy. Uh, one of my main complaints about this character so far is that she is very, very easy to die on. Um, if you don't have your charges set up right, if a physically immune monster shows up, um, you know, if like the, the perfect combination of, 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 you know, like effects on a monster happens, like things go south really quickly. And so I decided I needed a little bit of extra tankiness, uh, to make her into a little bit more of a not dying character. Um, fade, uh, I ended up only putting one point into, but I do have some pre-buff claws, um, I have two pre-buff claws of plus three fade and plus three fade. I'd eventually like to get better pre-buff claws than that, but I don't have those right now. So I'm currently sitting at level 15 fade, which is uh, it's the same thing as treachery. Uh, which is good, though, because that means I can wear something else besides treachery and uh, still get my level 15 fade. Um, I do not have a point in Venom, and the reason why I do not have a point in Venom is because I actually have um, Venom on my claw. I managed to find a pretty nice claw early on a ladder of plus three venom, plus three blades of ice, and plus two mind blast. Um, so I managed to save myself a point there, so I don't have to go down to mind blast, which was pretty nice. I did end up opting to not get the shadow warrior or the shadow master, and um, it's really just a skill point thing. I just don't have enough skill points to really come down here and grab these. If I did eventually find another claw, perhaps that had um, like shadow master on it or something, I might consider going down that road but as it is right now I just need those points in things like weapon block and other stuff um, on the martial arts tree um, I did end up capping out dragon talon for the number of kicks um, that's one of the most important thing for dragon talon is just having the high number of kicks um, for tiger strike I ended up leveling this up last and uh, I kind of wish that I had not put as many points into it and it's not that it's not useful because it is very useful um, it's really a survivability thing, and out of all of these skills, the only one that I can really take points out of is Tiger Strike. So I may actually end up respecking, um, pulling some points out of Tiger Strike and putting those into Weapon Block, because, um, I just really need a little bit more survivability. Uh, one point in Cobra Strike, because it's really just a one-point wonder. Um, even with one point in my plus of skills, I'm setting at 240% Mana Steel and Life Steel, which is pretty crazy, and I do work this into my rotation. Um, Dragonflight is actually on one of my claws, so I don't need to go down to that, and, um, I use that for mobility purposes, obviously teleporting around, uh, moving from pack to pack, it's extremely useful for this build, uh, not just for the mobility reasons, but also because, uh, you need to hit targets within a certain period of time where your charges will lapse, um, and when your charges lapse, you have to spend time to re-up those charges, which can be a bit of an issue. 
Um, next is the uh, Phoenix Strike, which of course I ended up dumping 20 points into. And the reason why I dumped 20 points into the Phoenix Strike is because Claw, I'm mean, sorry, the uh, Chain Lightning is really just amazing damage wise. It's probably the best damage ability on this tree. Um, just in its mere, sheer massive size that it has. Um, I also use Chaos Ice Bolt from time to time depending on the situation. So like if I'm in a zone that has a large number of lightning immunes, I'll switch to Chaos Ice Bolt. Meteor, on the other hand, does not get used at all um, because the Meteor is <laughs> crashing games. And not only is it crashing games, but it lags up the game and uh, eventually gets to the point where I can't even freaking do anything because the game's literally at 1 FPS. So I have just completely and utterly uh, just, just, just avoided Meteor entirely. Uh, Fist of Fire has been avoided specifically because as you level Fist of Fire up, it converts all of your physical damage into elemental damage. Elemental damage cannot lifesteal. So when you have Fist of Fire up, the main issue with this ability is that, well, you cannot use Cobra Strike, and you also cannot use Life Tap. Life Tap also does not work with elemental damage. So if you are a pure elemental damage build, like a Berserk Barbarian, and you have Life Tap on a target, it does absolutely nothing. And that's the same thing for Fist of Fire. Fist of Fire, when it's leveled up to its maximum level, it converts all of your physical damage into fire, and your life steal and your mana steal and your life tap do absolutely nothing. So Fist of Fire has been avoided for that specific reason because not only do I already have survivability issues, as I was talking about earlier, when you add Fist of Fire into the rotation, the survivability issues get worse because you can't life steal anymore, which is pretty bad. Uh, Claws of Thunder has been leveled up, but Claws of Thunder is avoided as well. And I'm going to go over that. But the main reason why we level up Claws of Thunder but to, to base 20 is because we want that sexy, sexy chain lightning damage. Uh, the main issue with Claws of Thunder is that because of the next hit delay issues, the lightning damage uh, from the Nova actually overrides the lightning damage from the Phoenix Strike. Um, and as you can see, Phoenix Strike does 8,064 lightning damage right now. Claws of Thunder only does 3,809 Nova damage. Everything that is touched by the Nova cannot be hit by the Chain Lightning. So the, the Claws of Thunder actually effectively brings down the kill speed for pretty much everything. Um, in my testing, I actually tested Claws of Thunder with the Chain Lightning, and I tested the Chain Lightning by itself, and I tested the Claws of Thunder by itself. And believe it or not, the Phoenix Strike by itself was faster than the Phoenix Strike and the Claws of Thunder together. Uh, which just goes to show you that the two skills interfere with each other immensely. Um, on top of that, Claws of Thunder also interferes with itself. So the charged bolts that come out of the Claws of Thunder actually can't damage anything within the range of the Nova, because when the Nova is going off, the Nova hits everything, and the charged bolts cannot hit anything that the Nova has touched in that four-frame delay. Which means that the charged bolts can only hit things on the outside of the Nova Circle, which makes them wholly and utterly useless. Blades of Ice, which is the clear winner from this tree, is quite honestly the best skill on the tree. Um, I cannot talk Blades of Ice up any more than I already have, but um, I'm going to try. So Blades of Ice has a freezing effect, which will basically lock down everything. And in combination with a Cold Sunder, which I have worked into this build specifically because of Blades of Ice, um, is that it will freeze anything like, except for those specific monsters that cannot be frozen. There are some very specific monsters that have a immunity to, to freezing effects, like, like the Death Lords and Worldstone Keep and stuff like that. <clears throat> but for the most part, the 4-yard radius and the 3,000 damage, and the fact that Blades of Ice does not have an next hit delay, means that it does the highest amount of damage consecutively, like, within a certain period of time, and it helps immensely with the squishy horribleness of this character. In general, this character tends to be very, very soft in <laughs> damage taking. And, um, you know, it's so much easier to not have to worry about taking damage when the monsters are frozen and can't fight back. So you level up 20 points in the Blades of Ice and you actually use it. <clears throat> you level up 20 points in Claws of Thunder and you don't use it. You level up 20 points in Phoenix Strike and you do use it. Um, the general rotation of this character um, is... Two Phoenix Strike, three Blades of Ice, three Cobra Strike, three Tiger Strike. That is the current rotation, and it works extremely well. Um, now let's go over my equipment and what I've managed to obtain so far this ladder. Obviously, this is not 100% optimal, but um, that's fine. 
So right now I have one Mosaic Claw and a Suwaya with um, 134 to 179 damage. It did roll pretty good at 245% enhanced. Um, it has 15% cold skill damage, which is great because this is a Blades of Ice Claw. 11% <clears throat> Lightning, which was a bit unfortunate because I do use Lightning a lot. Um, and uh, it also has the, um, the skills that I have on it, obviously. So it's plus 3 Venom, plus 3 Blades of Ice, plus 2 Mind Blast. Uh, the other Suwaya is uh, a 132 to 177. It rolled 241% enhanced, which again, not bad. It rolled 9% on the cold skill, which is pretty unfortunate, but it rolled, did roll 13% on the lightning, which is another one of my main abilities. And uh, it has plus 1 Phoenix, plus 1 Dragonflight, and plus 2 Claws of Thunder. Now, the Claws of Thunder wasn't really useful, <laughs> um, but I really just wanted the Phoenix Strike and the Dragonflight together uh, because I wanted to save uh, 3 skill points here, so one, two, three, uh, by not having to go down to Dragonflight. I also managed to save one, two, three, by not having to go down to Mind Blast, and I managed to save one point in Venom by not having to go down to Venom, so for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven skill points um, that I managed to save by these specific point saver claws. So very, very nice. I'm also using a G-Face, mainly for the Crushing Blow, um, and it has an Umrune socketed in it, which is helping me with my resistances, which are unfortunately still in the, uh, the red uh, when I'm not using my Fade. I've got a Treachery on because, honestly, it's just the easiest plus two skill armor that I can use at this particular point. Uh, in the future, I would really like a Chains of Honor, but uh, that's not something that's in the cards just yet. Not on day seven, anyway, not without going on some website and purchasing a Burr Rune. Um, I did manage to craft myself this pretty awesome um, plus two martial arts amulet uh, with 6% faster run walk, 4% life leech, 1 dex, 18 life, and all resistance is 14. Um, I will obviously be looking for something better than this later on. Um, I did finally yesterday, just yesterday, or yeah, I mean, technically it's yesterday because it is uh, after midnight. Um, I just managed to get a hold of these Gore Riders thanks to one of our Kinship members, and uh, I really appreciate that, by the way. Um, and I was able to upgrade them with a Co-Rune and a Lem Rune. Um, I am wearing a Raven Frost, uh, of course, for the Canopy Frozen. Um, I have a borrowed Dungos. This isn't even mine. I'm going to have to get myself my own Dungos later. Um, I do have a couple uh, belts that I crafted that are pretty decent. And uh, I'll probably be switching back to one of these once I uh, give him back his Dungos. Uh, I did get a Bull Cathos Wedding Band from one of our Kinship members, which was pretty freaking sick. And uh, and I really kind of needed that extra life. I'm not going to lie. I really did. Um, and the plus one of skills is absolutely excellent for beefing up the damage of my Phoenix Strike. Um, I do have a pair of plus two Marshals with Dual Leech, 8% Crushing Blow, Life, and Fire Resistance. These are, like, absolutely excellent, and I don't really need the IAS, so it's actually just fine. Um, I did get a pair of Drax for doing Ubers, and we have killed Ubers quite a few times. Uh, speaking of Ubers, this is one of the Assassin Torches we got from the Ubers. Uh, so 31914, pretty nice. Um, I also managed to get a score pretty sweet Annie at 17, 19, 10. Um, and as far as my charms go, it's a mishmash of uh, just <laughs> whatever I've been able to find and put on this character. Um, I do have one MA skiller with plus three strength. I also have a 131 attack rating plus six dex grand charm, which ends up being a pretty ridiculous amount of attack rating because you get like five attack rating per dex point. So that's six times five plus 131. Um, I also have the plus one Shadow Discipline Skiller, which helps me out a little bit with my uh, my fade um, and uh, my weapon block and things like that, which for right now it's, you know, helping me survive. And another attack ridding uh, charm with 28 life, because I am having a little bit of trouble building the charges, but in the future I think I might shy away from attack rating charms. Um, I also have this uh, plus three max, 17 attack rating, 31 life. The max damage doesn't help my kicks, but <laughs> that 31 life is hard to ignore right now when my... Uh, my life is so low, and I'm trying my best to beef it up in, like, every way possible. I've got life on the amulet. I've got life on the Bolcasos. I've got life on the chammy. I got life on that chammy, you know, and so forth and so on. And I'm trying, I got life on the gloves. And if I take it all off, I go down to, like, 1,200, like, 1,100. Um, I have the cold rupture in here specifically just so that I can crowd control. So this is not about damage. Um, this is one of the things that makes the Cold Sunder so very valuable, especially for an MA Sin, is that when you're in there and you're actually fighting and you're having fun killing stuff, 
anytime you come across a cold immune monster, they're going to just ignore the Blades of Ice Freeze or even the Chaos Ice Bolt. And they're just going to start wailing on you. And in these situations, you can end up dead really fast. Um, so test in my testing, I have found that it is definitely 100% worth it to throw that Cold Sunder on your, your MA Mosaic Sin. Because it's going to allow you to crowd control those monsters with ease. Every single monster that's immune to cold, you're going to be able to freeze now. Um, now, granted, there are several monsters in the game that are immune to all sorts of crowd control effects. Um, some... Um, more so than others. Uh, like, for instance, you can't freeze Glooms, you can't freeze uh, Ghosts, um, not in Hell difficulty anyway. And uh, there are certain certain Death Lords that cannot be frozen and are immune to crowd control effects. Other Death Lords are not. It's weird. Uh, you have to kind of like go by a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I also have a bunch of really nice chamis that I've been collecting, uh, just, just whatever I've been able to throw on this character. 10% uh, lightning res, small cham, I got 11% with a dex, I got a 16 life with a 4 fire, I got a 17 life with a 7 cold, a uh, 2 strength with 11 cold, that one's actually pretty nice, um, a 16 lifer, which uh, probably replaced that eventually, a 9% lightning, and uh, this freaking crazy thing, which I need to trade off, is a fire 11, 7% uh, better chance of magic item small charm, which is uh, pretty valuable. Um, could be a little bit more valuable if it were cold or lightning, but it's still a perfect small charm. Uh, my mercenary, which uh, I'd like to show you him too, um, I was lucky enough to find a Guardian Angel Templar code, although I still need to get it upgraded. Um, that is a really nice little armor there. I would like to switch him out eventually to a duress, which... Um, We'll see. Um, I have a Bulwark and an Eth Grand Crown, which is very nice. The Bulwark is a, honestly a absolutely excellent helmet for mercenaries and uh, a very easy choice. Uh, eventually, he might have something better, but it's kind of hard to beat 5% lifesteal with uh, increased maximum life 5%, DR7, physical damage reduced by 10%, and 290 defense with 20% faster hit recovery. It's just a really, really good choice for a mercenary, and there's really not a lot of other helmets that are better than that combination of effects. Um, it really depends on what you're going for, but it's just a really sweet helmet. Um, I also have a Hustle Hyperion Spear for him, which I think is really cool. Um, I, I'm actually in the search of a War Pike at this particular point, because I want to see how much damage he can really do with a Hustle, because he's got all this IAS. You know, it's got 30% IAS on it, it's got the Fanaticism aura, it's got the Burst of Speed, and I kind of want to see... Um, how it plays out if you throw it in a war pike, like what kind of damage output it does, and whether he's still able to hit that max breakpoint with such a slow weapon. Um, I think it's pretty much time to just take you out and have some fun blowing some stuff up. So uh, let's go ahead and cast our little pre-buffs here. And let's go to River of Flame. We got all the immunities here, so why not? Now the hardest part of this character, quite honestly, is just building your charges. Um, <laughs> you, you run in, you know, you find a monster to wail on, hopefully something that's not going to kick your butt, and you start building your Cobra Strike first, and then uh, usually what I do is I build my Tiger Strike second, and then I start building my Blades of Ice third. And once you have your Blades of Ice up, you can, of course, tag it a couple times and try and get those monsters to uh, to, to, to leave you alone. Now, the hardest part about this, um, after you get your initial charges, is actually building up the uh, the Phoenix Strike. And, of course, I just uh, I was on my pre-buff clause, so... Absolutely ruined my stack. Let's do that again. Okay. And of course, all the effects make it very difficult to see what the hell's going on and how many charges you actually have built, which is half the issue in itself. Now, once you get your two charges built on your Phoenix, which is the, probably the hardest one of the lot, because you pretty much just build three Blades of Ice, you build three Cobra Strike, and you build three Tiger Strike. So you don't really care too much about, like, timing your hits and making sure you've got the right number of hits. Like, you just just roll it through. It's not that big of a deal. But with Phoenix Strike, you've got to make sure you hit only two times. You don't want to hit once, because once is Meteor, and that's the one that kind of lags and crashes out people. Um, t three times is, of course, the Chaos Ice Bolt. And Chaos Ice Bolt is... Meh. Um, it's good in certain specific situations. Um, I will admit that, um, like, if you're in a situation where there's a ton of lightning immunes, 
all around you and you just don't have any other choice, then yeah, switch to, Blade, uh, to your Chaos Ice Bolt in those situations because it's going to be the superior damage type in a situation where there's all lightning immunes. Uh, you can customize it. You know, you can you can set it up exactly how you need. Now, there's a couple ways you can play this character. You can just run around and you can just absolutely murder everything. Um, or you can also use Dragonflight to just bunny hop around. And uh, Dragonflight, honestly, is probably the best way to keep your charges running because they do run out after about, uh, I think it's like 18 seconds. And after 18 seconds, the um, you're going to have to rebuild all your charges again, which is unfortunate. Um, sometimes it'll last between waves, like on bail runs. Um, it's like just long enough if you're paying attention and you kick the monster as soon as the wave starts. Um, other times, not so much. Um, like there's times where you won't quite hit the monster in time or you, or you don't get that last hit off right before the last monster dies and uh, it doesn't work. It also does not work for um, getting to Diablo uh, after you've popped all the seals and you have, you know, like got Diablo ready to uh, to kill. It, it is a little difficult to actually like save your charges for him, but I do have a uh, a very weird way that you can keep your charges, and I'm gonna share that with you uh, once we get to Diablo. Uh, I figured the easiest way to show you how this character performs is just to take you into a game and let you see how she freaking demolishes things. Now, um, never let your charges go down, though. Like, if you can help it, never let your charges go down, because it slows you down immensely. Once your charges drop, like, that's the end of the story. You've got to find a monster that won't kill you, and, and you're not really strong enough on your own <coughs> to uh, to really build your charges if, if the monsters can kick your butt. So, like... Uh, in many situations, like especially if you find like big old packs of Death Lords and stuff like that, it's very difficult to, to do anything. Um, I, I liken this character very much so to Naruto. If you guys have uh, if you guys have played Naruto, and uh, honestly, I think it's like the most apt description that I can make for this character. All right, are you guys ready? It's freaking Rock Lee from Naruto. Okay, it's literally the dynamic entry from Naruto. Okay, so this is how we do it right here. You want to go ahead and convert this monster real quick, pop the last seal, and then the monster will deconvert, and then you want to go ahead and you want to hit him one last time, which is going to re-up your charges, and that's going to make your charges last until Diablo comes. Very easy solution. Just make sure you convert that last monster before you hit the last seal, and if you convert the monster before you hit the last seal, you'll be able to keep your charges before Diablo spawns. It's a it's a very tight timing window, and it's a little bit more than 18 seconds. So you will lose your charges if you don't do this. So just make sure you hit a couple mind blasts off, convert at least one monster after you hit the last or before you hit the last seal. Because if you do it after you hit the seal, he's going to be dead. Then wait until he deconverts, which doesn't even take that long because they're only converted for a very short period of time. It's like 6 to 10 seconds which is less than the duration of your charges and then hit him and that re-ups your charges and you can make it to Diablo which is pretty cool. Um, overall, I'm having a lot of fun with this character and um, I definitely feel like this character is a very powerful character. My main issues with this character so far have been that of survivability. She is, unfortunately, very squishy, and I've said that many times here, but uh, I am looking to remedy this. Um, one of the things that I am looking to do is maybe pull some points out and dump them into weapon blocks so she's a little bit tankier there. Um, it would be nice if she had, <laughs> um, you know, like maximum resistances. I do feel like Chains of Honor will make a big difference in her tankiness. And getting her, like, everything to 75% resistances will certainly be helpful. But if I have to be completely honest, the main reason why she has an issue with tankiness is this. Her defense is terrible. She has an average chance that Diablo will hit me of 87%. And even though I do have a 53% chance to block, it's just, <laughs> it's just every single monster has like almost over an 80% chance of hitting me because my defense is so low. And I need to figure out how specifically to fix this. Uh, one way I was considering fixing this is uh, Cloak of Shadows, which Cloak of Shadows does have a very nice defensive buff added to it. 
And um, with enough points, it could potentially last long enough to give me the defense that I need to just not get absolutely destroyed every single time somebody looks in my direction. On top of that, Cloak of Shadows is an absolutely amazing defensive ability in general because it does cause everyone within the radius to, you know, obviously be blinded. Um, and it also reduces their defense as well, which makes them easier to hit. And just, in general, could be a very interesting option. Um, I haven't respect for the last time yet, and uh, one of the things that uh, I was going to do once I finally respec and get my character set up properly is, um, you know, min-max all of my stats and min-max all of my points here as much as possible. Um, I do feel like Tiger Strike is the easiest one to pull points out of for things that I might need in other places. And I do eventually intend to max out Tiger Strike, but hear me out about Tiger Strike. It's single target damage, okay? As much as I love single target damage and as much as single target damage is helpful, it doesn't help me when I'm farming chaos and I've got a thousand monsters around me. You know, like, it doesn't help me when I'm in the middle of the cow level and there's a thousand cows around me. So pulling out a little bit of skill points from Tiger Strike isn't going to be the worst thing in the world. But pulling out points from Phoenix Strike, pulling out points from Plates of Heist, pulling out points from Claws of Thunder is going to lower my overall AoE damage tremendously. And um, quite honestly, just not really what I'm looking for. Like, I really enjoy having the ability to kill a large swath of monsters um, just in general. And um, as you can see, I pretty much blew through P1 Chaos here without any issues whatsoever. Absolutely annihilated Diablo. And that's pretty much been my experience so far is that even in Players 8, <laughs> I've got no problem killing anything. Like, I just absolutely demolish them. And um, thanks to Blades of Ice and the Cold Sunder, um, I'm having a lot less issues with... Um, squishiness and dying uh, because I don't have to worry about those cold immune monsters ripping me to shreds while I'm in the middle of a battle. Um, I dynamic entry, as Rock Lee does, into the middle of a fight. I freeze everything <clears throat> once I'm in the middle of the fight, and then I start wailing on them. Um, those individual monsters that might be immune to lightning or physical, I can still kill with the or lightning or, or cold, I can still kill with the physical damage of the Dragon Talent. If they're immune to lightning, I can still kill them with the cold or the physical damage. If they're immune to cold, I can still kill them with the lightning or the physical damage. Um, I have three different elements, and I do pretty good damage on all three right now. In fact, now might be a good time to just um, run the numbers. Alright, so let's run some numbers here, and let's see what kind of damage output I'm running. So as of right now, I have 3,085 uh, cold damage on my AOE Blades of Ice. So let's go ahead and run those numbers. So uh, we first we got to find our average, which is 2,872. Uh, plus the uh, top end, which is 3,085. I know you can't see it because it's behind my head, but that's okay. And uh, we have 5,957, which we divide by 2. Uh, which gives us a total damage output of uh, 2,978.5 uh, for our Blades of Ice. Uh, so it's not bad. Uh, Blades of Ice also has no next hit delay, so it's going to hit for the most amount of damage per kick cycle. Uh, we are currently looking at 7 kicks, uh, which is uh, 3 frames per kick. So we can multiply this by 7. We can just times 7 which is 20,849.5 damage just from Blades of Ice uh, during a 7 kick cycle, which is pretty darn good. Um, then we're going to take our kick damage, which is um, Dragon Talon, and we have to add in our Venom damage, which, uh, let's go ahead and recast our Venom here. Uh, you may notice that Venom does not appear on the actual tree. The reason why Venom doesn't appear on the tree is because kicks do not show elemental damage, uh, which is rather unfortunate, but kicks will still do elemental damage, um, which is helpful to us in calculating because that way we don't have to subtract the elemental damage from the ability. But what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to beef up our Tiger Strike real quick on a random monster so that we can see um, what our total Dragon Talon damage is. So let's go ahead and uh, A, 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 A. So we've got three Tiger Strikes. Um, and we are looking at 4,105 to, or, well, okay, that's with our fanaticism. We've got our little fanaticism more. So 4,126 to, 
And of course, he walked away from me. The fanaticism aura on the uh, hustle is very small, by the way. So let's uh, get back over here. Come here. Come here. Come here. 6,508. Alright, so 6,508. Uh, equals 10,634. So we also have to add in our elemental damage. So we do have uh, 225 to 245. So let's just uh, average that out at 230. So plus 230. Um, and then we can also add in any kind of elemental damage we might have on our character. So we do have 15 to 45 cold damage on our ring. Which we could probably, again, average out to, like, 30. So another 30 damage. Um, and do we have any other elemental damage anywhere? Yeah, that's pretty much it, except for... Uh... Nope, that's it. Alright, so then we're going to multiply this by, again, 7 kicks. So we've got 76,258... Uh, physical damage. So we are currently looking at that 20,849 and then the 76,258 uh, which are both very very sexy. Um, then we also have the Phoenix Strike. So the Phoenix Strike is another completely different uh, doojank and the Phoenix Strike has a total damage of 3 to 8,064 at the moment. So we are looking at 3 plus 8,064 divided by 2 which gives us an average damage of 4,033 um, and we're going to, this, this unfortunately has a next hit delay of four, which is an issue. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take our 25 next frame hit delay, and we're going to have to divide that by four, which is going to get us 6.25 attacks, uh, within a second. Um, so then we can take that damage number, that 4,033, and we can multiply that by 6.25 hits per second, so we're looking at about 25,206. Now we add it all up, so we've got uh, 76,258. That's 101,000, and then we also have the cold damage, which is uh, 20,849. Uh, and we're looking at about 122,000 damage per second. Um, which is pretty cool. It's actually really freaking awesome. Um, the amount of AoE damage that we do, though, is subtracted from the physical. So if we take our 76,258 physical, and we subtract that, uh, we still have a very healthy 46,055 AoE damage, which is coming out from the Chain Lightning and the Blades of Ice on... Uh, every single kick cycle of seven kicks, uh, which is a pretty amazing amount of AoE damage, which tends to annihilate most monsters. Um, on top of that, of course, we also have other forms of damage which are being applied. So we have our crushing blow. Uh, right now we are sitting at a very healthy 58% crushing blow. We have the 15% CB from the Gore Riders. We have the 8% uh, CB from the Gloves. And, of course, the 35% CB from the winged helm which means that when we come across those monsters that are you know a little bit mean you know they got lots of hp we can burn through them relatively quickly uh 10 chance of open wounds of course from the gore riders which is more than enough for what we need and uh in general this character has just been a blast to play um i currently have 60 percent faster hit recovery which um i'd like to get up to 86 percent uh 30 40 i mean 50, 60. I actually lost 30 when I took off the... Yeah, I lost 30 when I took off the Shadow Dancers. That's what it was. So I did I did have my 86 because I was sitting at 90% faster recovery, which was exactly what I needed. Um, now I'm only sitting at 60, which puts me below that last breakpoint, which for a squishy character like me is kind of a big deal. All right, I think I've gone over everything. Uh, um... I would like to recap very quickly. I know this video has already been going for quite some time, but I'm going to recap really quickly what we found. Uh, we got a couple Ohm runes, um, quite a few vexes, I mean, uh, gulls and mals, of course, because we've been making lots of mosaics. Uh, we actually had a T Mite drop, Tyrael's Mite. That was pretty cool. And uh, that's sitting on somebody's mercenary right now. Um, I got an F Guardian Angel, which was a pretty good drop. Um, 
Not a lot of, like, really, really crazy drops. There was a Death Fathom, with which we gave out within the Kinship. And we've done a big crafting session uh, where we've gotten a lot of amulets, which we handed out to pretty much everybody within the Kinship for now. And <clears throat> G-Face was a good find early on, as well as the Umrune. Uh, from my Forges, I actually got a uh, Lemrune on my Nightmare and an Umrune on my Hell, or is it Umrune on my Nightmare? I can't remember which one, actually, now. Um, which was pretty advantageous, because I used the Lemrune to make myself a Treachery, which gave me the plus two skills early on, and I used the Umrune in my helmet, uh, which helped me out a butt ton. Um, and thanks to some donations from the Kinship, I was able to put together both of my claws. I was actually pretty surprised to find this plus three Venom, plus three Blades of Ice, plus two Mind Blast claw. That one is actually pretty good. And I'm, I'm going to be swapping my Treachery for a Kraken Shell soon, because I like the, I like the appearance of the Kraken Shell, and also the, um... It has a has a slightly different uh, pauldron there. For some reason, the, this one has the has the one different arm, and this one has the two same pauldrons. Um, I mean, they're they're the same speed, and the defense is pretty similar anyway. Um, the this one's actually a little bit higher because it's superior, and I actually want to take that one away because the superior one is costing me way too much in terms of uh, repair costs. Um, and this was obviously a drop highlight too, a uh, very, very nice drop there. And, um, overall we've been farming Ubers, we've been crafting, we've been doing everything in our power to try and get our kinship up to, to spec. And I just wanted to give this little summary video on our first week. So as always, thank you for watching and, uh, keep watching.